Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're playing with Kobe bricks again. We are in my dining room currently, uh, where I have some of my fleet of Kobe ships on display. And uh, for today's video, we're going to use Kobe's USS Enterprise kit to talk about the, the different combat power between a battleship and an aircraft carrier. So, uh, you can probably see my Iowa-class battleship right there behind me. With, with those 16-inch guns, how could anything else compete? And yet, we know that aircraft carriers, like Enterprise here, take over the role of queens of the fleet and the Navy's prime power projection assets during World War II, while arguably before Battleship New Jersey is even completed. Today's video is sponsored by Build Kobe. Build Kobe is a website where you can buy ships like this one, aircraft, or even tanks that go from World War I era, if you want to build your Red Baron uh, Fokker triplane, all the way up to uh, modern jet aircraft like my beloved A-10 Warthog. Our model of the day is USS Enterprise which is one of only two aircraft carriers that Kobe has produced thus far, but I'd love to see more in their uh, catalogs. So if you guys go out and pick one up, it'll tell them that there's more demand for ships like this. And then you'll also have the opportunity to modify it to whichever, do you want it to look like it did at Eastern Solomons, at Leyte Golf, or at Midway like mine? One of my favorite things about uh, the Kobe kits of the last couple of years, and presumably going forward, there are no stickers to apply. Everything you see here is a printed piece. So the, the flight deck logos, the, the number, the flags, the, the aircraft, they're all printed pieces. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the absolute worst at applying stickers. The other thing I love about these kits is the sheer level of detail. I'm not sure if you guys know this about me, but the way I memorize the, the aspects of ships, how many guns they have, that sort of stuff, is by building models of them. I, I, I can't sit there and read a book and memorize it from that, but if I build the model of it, then I not only know how many guns and they had, but where they are and what the major key features are. That's why I grew up building model ships and why I still do it today. I don't have the time to build traditional box models anymore, but building block kits like this one are great. Uh, this kit was just under 3,000 pieces, if I remember correctly. It took me about eight hours to build, so only a one-day commitment as, as opposed to building traditional plastic models that uh, take considerably longer. And I work two jobs. I don't have time for that. So if you're interested in USS Enterprise, the Wildcat, or any of the other kits behind me, there's a link in the description below to the products currently available at buildkobe.com. Remember, as of June of uh, 2023, if you order anything more than $50, you get free shipping, and anything more than $100, you get 10% off the order. Be sure to click on the link in the description below to check out their catalog. So, an aircraft carrier like Enterprise would carry about a hundred aircraft. Some of these aircraft are in reserve, that's not their full striking force, but um, at the Battle of Midway, for example, this ship would carry 27 Wildcats, which is what we've got here, another Kobe kit. I would carry 38 Dauntless Dive Bombers and 14 Devastator Torpedo Bombers. I chose her air group at Midway because arguably that's her most famous engagement, and because I've chosen to depict my model on that date. One of the things that drives me crazy about Kobe is, uh, or, or Kobe builders, I should say, is because these models are so good, so good. Um, people build them according to the instructions and put them on their shelf. Well, Kobe doesn't necessarily design their kits to be a specific date. They give you all the pieces you need to pick your date and change things one way or another. Uh, so I always modify my Kobe kits to be how they would appear on a specific date, uh, which in the case of this, 
I ended up taking a bunch of anti-aircraft guns off that she would have had later in 1942 during the Solomon Islands campaign to make her look like she would have on June 4th, 1942 at the Battle of Midway. Uh, and so because I've, I've made a couple of changes, uh, changed the searchlights and, and the anti-aircraft guns and some other things to look like they would have at that time, I'm specifically talking about her on that date and what she would have carried. This is uh, an extremely early war American air group, and so it is way weaker than what later carriers would have, or even what Enterprise would have a year or two years later. Uh, this is an air group that would have been completely updated with more modern aircraft by the time New Jersey is even commissioned a year later. So, keep that in mind. As built, these ships were designed to carry four squadrons of 18 aircraft. However, wartime experience leads to uh, the, the squadron sizes changing. You notice I said that uh, there were 27 Wildcats, not 18. Well, we find out we need more fighters. You need fighters both to act as combat air patrol for your fleet and also to escort your strike group when they're bombing the target. Uh, so you will see that number of fighters go up over the war. And by this point, six months into the war, you've already gone from 18 to 27. And that's accounting for some losses that uh, the air groups have sustained in combat already in the Pacific War under the command of Admiral Halsey. Uh, 38 Dauntlesses, that's actually uh, two squadrons of 19 instead of 18. You'll often see one squadron with an extra aircraft because that's the uh, commander of the air group's aircraft. I'm not sure why she had uh, 19 in Midway. Um, it might have been a sp uh, spare aircraft, or uh, the, you, you see more reinforcing the fighter squadron, so maybe they're reinforcing the dive bomber squadron as well. And you see only 14 Devastators. The Devastators are the slowest of these aircraft, as you'll see in a minute, and uh, are arguably obsolete at this point in the war. So they've already been chewed up significantly in the first six months of fighting. Um, and rather than replace them, we're waiting for this new Avenger to come online. Some of the first ones will be operational during the Battle of Midway. Um, but you see this squadron reduced in size as you're adding more to the other squadrons. So let's look at these aircraft in brief. Your Wildcat here has a crew of one. That's your fighter plane. Your Dauntless has a crew of two, and your Devastator has a crew of three. As the aircraft gets bigger and bigger and bigger, more people in it. But also, as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they go slower. So for example, your average Wildcat, and remember, for each of these aircraft types, there are dozens of variations, which each had slightly different stats. Um, so I'm just picking one that's roughly what would have been used at Midway. Uh, your average Wildcat, about 288 knots top speed. Uh, your average Dauntless, 222 knots. Okay, same ballpark, looking good. The fighter's obviously faster. Uh, your average Devastator, 111 knots. Half of the speed of the next... Uh, slowest aircraft. So there's your limiting uh, factor here, and one of the reasons why she's considered to be obsolete at this point in the war. That's okay. Slow and steady wins the race, right? What are the ranges of these aircraft? For your Wildcat, 734 nautical miles. Now, that's the full range. Keep in mind that you're not actually going to launch a strike at an enemy over 700 miles away. Realistically, uh, remember, you have to fly out there and then come back afterwards. So uh, that's dropping you down to, what, 360? But, but, you also um, need some extra time in case you get damaged, lose some of your fuel, spending time on target. Uh, so realistically, closer to 300 miles um, is accurate for the Wildcat. And, and even less than that, because that's at your most economical speed. When you get into combat, you're, you're pushing the throttle all the way uh, forward, and so you're burning fuel much faster. You're not going to have that maximum range. The Dauntless, which forms both the scouting squadrons 
and the dive bombing squadrons on a carrier like Enterprise has a range of 969 nautical miles, so easily the longest of any of them, uh, which means that they can do an economical search out over 400, uh, almost to 500 nautical miles, or combat missions well over 300 nautical miles. Uh, but then we come back to the Devastator. They've got a range of 378 nautical miles, so less than 150 miles in actual combat. That's well, okay if the if the bomb load is still there, right? The Wildcat uh, can carry 200 pound bombs. And realistically, you don't put bombs on your fighter planes, uh, at least not in this point in the war. This is purely an anti-aircraft uh, vehicle, providing combat air patrol or shooting down the enemy's combat air patrol that's trying to shoot down your bombers. Uh, so carry extra fuel to keep up with your Dauntlesses, but don't carry bombs. Your Dauntless at this point in the war is using primarily 1,000-pound bombs in an anti-ship role. And they will carry the 1,000-pound bomb under the fuselage, and then they'll also carry 200-pound bombs on the wings, just as a little bit if you miss too far to the right with the 1,000-pounder, maybe one of your 100-pounders will still hit. Uh, so that's about 1,200-pound bomb load. Realistically, they can carry a lot more than that, but at Midway, that, that's more or less what Enterprise's bombers were carrying. The Devastators can also carry a 1,000-pound bomb if they're being used in the bomber role. They are torpedo bombers. They can do both. Uh, or they're carrying a 2,200-pound Mark 13 torpedo. So whether you're bombing a ship or a uh, land target, will determine which ordinance you're using. Never use a torpedo bomber to bomb a ship or your torpedo bomber will be shot down. Likely, if you're using your torpedo bomber to torpedo a ship, it'll be shot down. They, as you've just seen, they're already going slow. And they gotta come in low to be able to drop their torpedoes, which makes them uh, real easy to shoot at for your anti-aircraft gunners all over the side of your ship or your fighter planes flying combat air patrol. So all told, uh, if you're launching your air group and you want them to make a coordinated attack, you're going at the max range of the Devastator. Uh, you can go out to about 100, 150 uh, nautical miles. That'll take you just under two hours. So you're looking at about a four hour round trip if all your aircraft are flying at the same speed. In this single strike, you can deliver 456,000 pounds of ordnance on an enemy warship. So that's including the two 200-pound bombs on all your Wildcats. That's assuming you send all your Wildcats and uh, aren't holding any over your own fleet as combat air patrol. Well, what could you do with an Iowa-class battleship over a two-hour period? In theory, you can fire one round per barrel every 30 seconds. In practice, one round per barrel per minute is more reasonable, which is a good thing because you only carry about 130 rounds per gun, and in a two hour period, you're shooting 120 rounds. If you're completely loaded with armor piercing ammunition, which you would not be, uh, that is 2,700 pounds per shell, which means that your battleship can drop nearly six times the ordnance of a single airstrike over the same length of time. Uh, so that is 2,916,000 pounds of ordnance. That's just from the 16-inch guns over a two-hour period. Uh, we're not even counting in the five-inch guns. So, in theory, your battleship has significantly more combat power, can drop more ordnance on a target faster. How in the heck do aircraft carriers ever take over? An Iowa-class battleship and a Yorktown-class aircraft carrier, the same speed. Armor? Yes. No. I'm not even going to go into the numbers. Just for all practical purposes, that is armored. This is not functionally armored. Not only is it not armored, but it, it's a big gas can carrying all the fuel and ammunition for these aircraft. Um, so that is like the opposite of armor. And Yorktown-class aircraft carriers proved to be incredibly survivable. 
uh, incredibly survivable, especially compared to other aircraft carriers. Not so much when you compare them to battleships. You look at the, the other guns, this has eight five-inch guns, four of them can shoot at a side. Uh, it's only got four quadruple 1.1-inch guns in this configuration, so nothing like the 80 uh, 40 millimeters on an Iowa-class battleship. Uh, you can see a little bit of 20 millimeters. Obviously, there's a lot of room here for more, and by the end of the war, significantly more guns will be added to this ship. I may have taken the guns from this kit to install on this one to get the right number of guns on that. Uh, so that might be affecting the combat power a little bit, but still, it's not even the same order of magnitude with the amount of ordnance that these can launch. Why does this take over? That has to get within 20 miles to drop that ordnance. And the U.S. Navy does do some sustainability tests to see how long the crew can maintain a rate of fire like that. They can't fire one round per minute per barrel for two hours straight. Uh, it's, it's just not going to work out like that. This aircraft carrier can deliver all that ordnance I described in two hours. They can turn around and land again two hours later, rearm and launch another strike that same afternoon. And that strike is going several hundred miles, 150 miles if you're limiting yourself to the Devastator's range. By the time New Jersey comes onto the scene, those have all been replaced with much better aircraft, and so your ranges go up exponentially, and eventually it's your fighter plane's range that limits. Um, so you're looking at being able to launch strikes two and 300 miles away from your carrier and still having enough fuel to do the job when you get there. So the sheer power projection, the area that you can control with an air group like this, is unprecedented in warfare up to this point. Have you built any model ships? Let us know in the comment section down below, especially if they're Kobe bricks or other building blocks like the ones behind me. Uh, head over to my Facebook page, link in the description below, to shoot me pictures of what you've built. And if you've modified them, from their original builds. I don't feel like enough people do this with Kobe products, and I'd love to see more mods out there. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from buildkobe.com. We really appreciate their support on this video. You can support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in our museum. Thanks for watching.